How does one strike the appropriate balance between finding a morally good wife versus a hot wife? <clears throat> That's really, a, that really is an excellent question. Hmm. I did great, by the way. I was watching a clip that someone pulled out of, I think, a talk I did at Cambridge. I talked about this a little bit and uh, talked about the observations I've had of people when they they move to incrementally destroy the attractiveness of their partner. So imagine, it's not that hard to imagine, imagine that you're that you have the capacity to to become jealous and, and to waver in your trust. And so then imagine, we'll talk to the men about this first, imagine that your wife is attractive and you're dubious about your own utility. Maybe you have reason to be dubious. And so the fact of her attractiveness, although attractive to you, is also in principle, an enticement to those who might steal her from you, not least as a consequence of your own insufficiency. And so the question is, well, what should you do about that? And a typical answer is, punish her repeatedly and subtly for any manifestation whatsoever of that dangerous attractiveness. And so, how would you do that? Wait until she presents herself in an attractive manner, let's say with a sexual edge, maybe you're going out for an evening. And then when she asks you how she looks, continue looking at your phone or attend to something equally trivial, make a slightly cutting comment, and deflate her. That'll teach her. And then do that 50 times. And then you won't have to worry about whether or not you have a hot wife, because she'll be so demoralized that the answer will be no. And then if you really want to play the game, more effectively, that's when you can start complaining to her about how badly she's let herself go. Because then you can blame her for what you just did. And then you get to, well, not have your cake and not eat it too, let's say, and you can dispense with all the moral blame. And if you don't think you do that, you should watch very carefully. Because one of the things that people do is take the shine off those who are shining around them so that they don't look dim in the reflected light. And that's a terrible thing to do. And so then, one of the things you might consider, both of you in a marriage, is when you see your partner do something that you regard as attractive, well, first of all, you need to admit that, right? And that's hard, actually, because you might have moral qualms about your own lust, and you should, because it's a dangerous force. But in principle, you want that sexual tension to exist in your relationship, but you need to have it bounded by the necessity for integrating all the other elements of your life around it. Right? It can't be a predominant and impulsive force because it will break everything apart. So it has an intrinsic danger, and because of that intrinsic danger, that's the danger of sexuality itself, you might have moral qualms about its manifestation in your own soul. And, and fair enough. 
It has to be integrated in relationship to the desire, let's say, to maintain the relationship, but over the long run, in a, in a reciprocal and, and mutually beneficial and respectful manner, that would be the ethical end of the, the story, and that was also held in question. But, just because something can get out of control doesn't mean that it's intrinsically bad, and I would say that's certainly the case about sexual attraction. And if your partner is doing things that you find attractive, you might think really hard about rewarding that. And then you may find that you're afraid to reward it because you're afraid of your own urges or you're afraid that if your partner becomes too attractive, they'll leave you. And then I would say, well, maybe you should up your ante a bit so that they're less inclined to leave you because... And, and maybe you should think through your own sexual morality in more detail and discuss that with your wife so you don't stumble over your own... Um, <laughs> very funny. <laughs> very funny. Yeah, you filthy-minded creatures. <laughs> yeah. Tongue, how's that? Um, so that you can each properly reward each other for keeping the erotic spark alive in your life. And I think that's a high form of art to manage that. Now, we know that married people have better sex lives than people who aren't married. And the whole culture, in some sense, advertises the opposite. But there's no data to indicate that that's true. Because the vast majority of people who aren't in permanent, monogamous, long-term relationships are isolated and alone. And so it's not a good solution. You can have a hotter, erotic life within the confines of a marriage, but it's a very difficult balancing act to manage. But then you might ask yourself, well, you want the alternative? Right, even though it's difficult and challenging, the absence of that is in some sense a catastrophe of adventure, right? I mean, because there are a few reliable sources of profound motivation in life, and certainly sexual attraction is one of them. And if you can keep that dynamically alive in the confines of an ethically constituted relationship, you can have the best of both worlds.